The House will come to order. Today, the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Brooklyn Winter and Schuyler Winter from Branson School in Branson, Colorado, the children of Representative Winter. Please join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Shebel, please call the roll. Representative Zamabale. Armagost. Bacon. Representative Bacon. Excused. Bird. Bachenfeld. Basenecker. Bottoms. Bradfield, Bradley, Brown, Catlin, Doherty, DeGraff, Degree Kennedy, Dixon, Duran, English, Representative English, excused. Epps, Evans, Frizzell, Froelich, she's here, Garcia, Rep Garcia, excused, Gonzalez Gutierrez is excused, Hamrick, Hartsook, Herod, Rep Herod, excused, Holtorf. Rep. Judah is excused. Joseph. Kip. Leader. Representative Leader. Excused. Lindsay. Linstead. Luck. Representative excused. Luck is excused. Lukens. Lynch. Mabry, he's here. Marshall, Rep. Marshall. Excused. Martinez, Morrow. Oh, Representative Morrow. Excused. McCormick, McLaughlin, Michael Sinjanae, Ortiz. Rep. Ortiz. Excused. Parenti. Representative Parenti. That's here. Rep. Parenti. Excused. Is excused. Puglisi. Ricks. Charbini. Sirota. Snyder. Soper. Story. Taggart, Titone, Valdez, Velasco is excused, Vigil, Weinberg, Weissman, Wilford, Wilson, Winter, <clears throat> Woodrow, Young, and Madam Speaker. Here. With 54 present, 11 excused, we do have a quorum. Representative Frizzell. Good morning, Madam Speaker. It is an honor to serve with you. And an honor to serve with you. Madam Speaker, I would like to this morning highlight the beauty of the place that I come from, Douglas County. Douglas County, 
is very diverse. We have Pike National Forest, where you can hike Devil's Head. We have the Cherry Creek Trail. We have Greenland Ranch. So in order to appreciate the beauty and diversity of our great state this morning, I move that the Journal of Saturday, March 11th, 2023, be approved as corrected by the chief clerk. And if you love the beauty of our great state and the great outdoors, please give me an I vote. Well done. Members, you've heard the motion that the journal be approved as corrected by the chief clerk. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no? no. The motion is adopted. Announcements and introductions. Representative Amabile. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I um, have some guests today. Uh, the most beautiful place in my district, at least for today, is Netherland. And I have guests here from high school and middle school students from Netherland, and also the director of the Netherland Community Library District and board members from the library district. And I hope you'll all give them a warm welcome. They would love to chat with you about why they all care so much about libraries in our state. And they also are here, they'll be here all day and they would love to meet with you and talk to you. Um, they're also learning about democracy in action. So let's all be on our best behavior today. <laughs> and um, again, please welcome my guest from Netherland. Representative Bradfield. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, good morning, members. I want to tell you about an event that is coming up on Wednesday morning, but also to tell you a bit about the folks who you will be meeting that day. My district in El Paso County is no stranger to the supply chain challenges facing the disabled medically communi community and their clients. Imagine you need a hospital bed in your home for a loved one, or a ventilator for your child, or a wheelchair after surgery or following an injury. The members of the Colorado Association of Medical Equipment Services, or CAMES, are the people who provide these critically important supplies to your home. They are expertly trained to provide the equipment you need and work diligently and tirelessly to make sure the life-saving equipment you need is ready, available, and when you need it. Most recently, they have been doing so in lieu of delays in payment or foregoing payment because service is the heart of what they do. They will be here Wednesday morning hosting their legislative breakfast outside the old Supreme Court starting at 8 o'clock. Please join them for a cup of coffee, a bagel, and to hear about the important work they do across our entire state. Thank you. Thank you, Rep. Bradfield. Representative Valdez. Speaking of coffee members, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, do you hear that? No? Come on, folks. We got we to gotta do better. I'm going to send the uh, collection plate around, but we don't want to be uh, drinking Senko. We've threatened it before. Instant coffee is coming. Oh, hey. Thank, Thank you, you, Representative Rep. Wilson. Good start. Rep. Wilson. Sorry, I didn't even look. So it's almost St. Patrick's Day. All right. Donations to the coffee fund. Representative Snyder. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And House Finance will not be meeting today at 1.30. Enjoy your Monday afternoon off. Representative Weissman. Representative McCormick. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So today we have our Agriculture, Water, and Natural Resources Committee meeting at 1.30. 
Downstairs, we will be hearing House Bill 1075 and then House Bill 1066 for action only. So we'll see you there, 1.30. Thank you. Representative Froelich. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Housing, Transportation, and Local Government Committee meets tomorrow at 1.30 to hear three bills in LSBA. Thank you. Representative English. Good morning, colleagues. Um, I've been approved to be excused from the 16th to the 20th. Thank you. So approved. Representative Woodrow. Good morning, Madam Speaker. Members, uh, House, State, Civic, Military, and Veterans Affairs Committee will not be meeting today. Uh, it'll be taken off calendar. I'll see you all Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Representative McLaughlin. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's a pleasure to serve with you. And a pleasure to serve with you. Thank you. Okay, many of you might think you're Irish, but we actually have a Mick caucus here that celebrates being Irish. We meet one day a week, and it's Friday. And we bring all of you green snacks, and we would like all of you to wear something green. I'm giving you a heads up because usually it's the day before that we tell you, so you have until Friday to find something green and be the Irish that you all think you are. Thank you. <laughs> Representative Weissman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I guess two related announcements. One's a bit more serious, one is a bit more good humored. Uh, seriously, members, um, when we are here um, through the night and into the next morning, as we recently have been, um, you know, we're not the only ones who are here. Uh, that when we have those debates, uh, our nonpartisan staff behind us are here with us. Our sergeants in the green jackets are here with us. Other staff are here with us. Uh, our custodial crew are here with us. And I think we all went home Friday and uh, felt how hard it was to be without sleep for 26 or more hours straight. I know that they're all feeling the same thing. So I think that we should acknowledge that maybe with a, a little round of applause here, if I may, Madam Speaker. Woo! Thank you, Representative Weissman. Please proceed. And uh, members, now for the, the slightly silly part, but because we respect and honor our nonpartisan staff and because it is not their job to clean out the fridge in the room down the hall and because I was not here Friday making this announcement because we were otherwise engaged, uh, if you have something in there that's not the same color that it was when you put it in the fridge however many days ago, now would be a good time to take it out of there and deal with it. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Bradfield. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I just want to remind people that uh, the Legislator Bible Study will be tomorrow morning, 7.15, down in room 0109, 7.15 to 8.45. Uh, hope you can come. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Vigil and Representative Titone. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We, we have a few digits to recite, I think, in honor of tomorrow's great holiday. Representative Titone. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, 3.14159265359. What is that? Pi. That's pi. And close. what's tomorrow? It goes on. Well, I mean, it is close. It's an approximation. Pi day is tomorrow. And what we would like to do for pie day is to have as much pie in the building as possible. I am bringing two kinds of pie tomorrow. We'd like to invite other members of the chamber to do the same. Are you bringing some pie, Rep to Tone? I Rep will, to Tone. I, I, will, I will do my best to bring a pie tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Great. Bring pie. I love pie day. Representative Kip. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I have already acquired my pie and plan to bring one, but I'm really here to talk about our libraries because our libraries from around the state are here today. So if your library people send in a card, please go talk to them because they took the time to come to the Capitol, which we all know is really time consuming and inconvenient and hard. So we hope that um, you will say hi to your wonderful librarians. Great, thank you. Seeing no more announcements, members, we are on our first order of business, which is the third reading of Bill's final passage. 
Mr. Schiebel, please read the title to House Bill 1027. House Bill 1027 by Representatives Joseph and Weissman, also Senator Winter F. Concerning family time providing, provided pursuant to the Children's Code and in connection therewith making an appropriation. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move House Bill 1027 on third reading and final passage. The motion before us is the adoption of House Bill 1027 on third reading final passage. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Representative Bradfield. Please close the machine. With 59 ayes, zero no, and six excused, House Bill 1027 is adopted. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title to House Bill 1074. House Bill 1074 by Representatives Dixon and Amable, also Senator Marchman, concerning a study regarding workforce transitions to other industries and a connection therewith making an appropriation. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move House Bill 1074 on third reading final passage. Representative Holtorf. Thank you, Madam Speaker, esteemed colleagues. You heard me speak about this on second reading. <clears throat> but as I have a fiduciary obligation to represent my district and the people in my district, those in northeastern and eastern Colorado who make a living off the land including the natural resources and the mineral rights below the land. That is their constitutional right. If they hold those mineral rights. As I understand this bill, and I may be wholly confused, but I don't think so. This bill would require the Office of Future of Work to study workforce transitions in Colorado's economy specifically the skill transferability of workers in the oil and gas industry. And occupations that are facing the most disruption due to automation. Well, there are a lot of industries that are facing disruption. Banking in the Silicon Valley, energy across the United States, traditional energy, resources that have intrinsic value around the world, economic drivers in eastern Colorado and western Colorado in our ag communities, <clears throat> rights that are embodied by the Constitution, that you can use your land as you see fit, and if you hold the subsurface rights of land, for those of you that are in the legal space, you might understand what that means, that you're entitled to also have the benefit of your mineral rights subsurface, including oil and gas. So as we try to study to get ahead of something that's caused by public policy at the highest levels that harm rural Colorado, 
I want everybody to understand that. It is my responsibility to inform this body and chamber and anybody that's listening within this chamber and outside this chamber that the things that you do with seemingly innocuous legislation like this is a direct attack potentially against my industry sectors as, why, as we try to identify skills transferability of workers in the oil and gas industry. I'll tell you the oil and gas industry is vibrant and strong. If you let go of the reins and quit bending the mouth of that horse that is oil and gas and let that horse run responsibly in a controlled direction, but let the horse run and stretch its legs and give this state benefit and those people that live in it benefit of the vibrance and energy of that horse. If you don't mind a little country analogy. I am very troubled as this study is going to prepare programs and policies to prepare the workforce for these transitions. Well, I will tell you, my workforce in eastern Colorado doesn't need these transitions. You open this industry up and it provides more jobs, more economic opportunity, and more uplift to every citizen than near any other industry. And the world needs this energy. The world needs this energy, and Colorado has it in the cleanest form. And that's a fact, scientific fact. So I'm opposed to this type of legislation that tries to pre-consider these transitions. <clears throat> some of it may due to, be due to automation, some of it may not. But all industries need to be uplifted. We need to empower all of them and support all of them and not tie or hinder one sector and pull back those reins and make that bit pull back so hard that the mouth bleeds, if you understand anything about horses. And running horses or training horses. Because that's what's happening to the oil and gas sector for the people that I represent all across eastern and northeastern Colorado. 16 counties in total between my previous district and this district. And I just want you to know that. I want Colorado to know that. And I'm not sure where we're going with this. I don't think this is even necessary. Representative DeGraff. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. This bill is another attempt to legislate away the symptoms of bad legislation. It's just bad legislation that leads us to this point. This pull away from oil and gas towards electric, electricity, not only does electricity currently have twice the, ener twice the pollution footprint as gas, so it is really counterproductive. An all electric grid that we're trying to promote here is not only inefficient, highly, highly inefficient, it is also highly vulnerable. So we're trying, to, we're trying to cover over an ideological bent away from oil and gas. We're creating more vulnerability and less efficiency. And then we're trying to cover over the impact by throwing more money at what we're doing with the, the industries that we're actually productively running our economy. This is a fool's errand. The grid is incapable, and as the, as, the, as the availability expands, the market will take care of it. We're moving past, because, because most people don't understand the free market, they don't trust the free market, we're moving past the free market straight into the FUBAR market. And this will not work. We want to have, we want to have jobs in this country, we want to have jobs in this community, this, this same Anti-coal and gas and oil is, is what is driving up the house prices. It is what's driving up in, in inflation. You're, you're, it's that legislation that is driving up the cost, and then, we, and then we deal with the effects here, and then we try to paper over them with more legislation. 
and, and every time that legislation comes up, it creates more problems because there is no problem that the government can't make worse with a solution. Every single time. The attack on oil and gas that's driving this really needs to end. If you don't understand the science, and I know most of you don't understand the science. Representative DeGraff. Yes, ma'am. Please don't assume anything about what people understand or don't understand. Thank you. I would love to have, yes, ma'am. I would love to have the conversation with you around the science, if you don't understand it, that your fears about carbon dioxide that is driven by this oil and gas fixation amounts to one part in 10,000 of the energy in the atmosphere. We are chasing our tails. We are accomplishing nothing. We are, we are trying to paper over, and we're driving up inflation. We're driving up housing costs. We're driving up food costs. We're driving up all of the costs. We're driving people out of their homes, into their streets, into despondency. All the same policy that is, that is now we're trying to fix this one little part with a little bit more legislation. How much of our legislation this, we had legislation last week trying to paper over the effects, trying to paper over the inf impacts of an ideological drive that has absolutely no scientific basis. I do have backing for that. I can share that backing with you. And I would love to have you prove me wrong because the damage that is being done to people would be much easier to observe if you would just show me that it was wrong. So until then, and nobody's taken me up on that in the two months that I've been here. So until you do that, I'm gonna insist that this is bad policy stacked on bad policy, on a foundation of bad policy, built on an ideology that has no basis. So I'd ask you to vote no on this and then start to unwind and look at the basis for this be before we really do serious damage to our constituents. Vote no on this bill and a whole lot of others. Representative Soper. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, this is a tough bill and one that quite frankly I wish was not before us. The reason why is the bill does two things. It studies a transferability of, of skills and, and occupations from the oil and gas industry, that's A, and then B are industries that are being subjected to automation, which could be a number of industries. But what the bill doesn't do is it doesn't tell you why we're needing to look at oil and gas and moving those workers to another career field. It doesn't tell you why certain industries are automating and why those workers are needing to look to other occupations and job fields as well. And that's why it's a tough uh, vote. Because on one hand, yes, Coloradans need to be able to, if their industry is, is shrinking, be able to continue to have a job, put food on the table, make ends meet. But on another hand, there's nothing in this bill that talks about the reasons. It lists within the bill exploring how technology uh, is replacing workers, evaluate which occupations are facing the most disruption due to automation, identify which skills are transferable, identify the skills needed for emerging and growing industries, provide recommendations uh, for funding and future policies. There's nothing that's in this that talks about the reasons. And one thing that I've heard on the automation side from a number of my constituents in the agricultural sector is they're moving to automate as much in agriculture as possible. And the reason why is because of policies that have been enacted uh, at the state level that has resulted in uh, li limiting the number of hours that a farm worker can work, which means that in order to be able to get the harvest out on time, now Colorado farmers are looking for more and more automation. And I, you know, you know it frustrates me to think that we're, we're gonna be studying and thinking of ways to move someone from farming to other career fields. But 
you know, this is what it's come down to. I wish, I wish the reason was in this bill. And I wish we could talk about that. Why, why are industries deciding to automate? Agriculture is just uh, one particular industry that I happen to be familiar with. I know there's many, many other industries. And I think it is important to understand uh, why uh, industries do choose to automate and why uh, they uh, choose to go down that direction. And I wish we could talk more about that. So that's why this is a tough vote. I appreciate being able to say a few words here this morning. Thank you. Representative Dixon. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, not planning to be up here for long, just wanted to say this bill really came about from observing changes that are already happening in our economy and jobs that are already at risk due to these changes. This bill is not intended to start any new transitions in the economy or to force any people's jobs to be transitioned or changed in any way. It's not to force anyone to do anything. It's just to make sure that we have resources and research in place so that we can plan for the future and help all Coloradans. And I do wanna note that many of the jobs that we are seeing potentially in danger are jobs in rural areas and jobs that people are already feeling quite vulnerable. And I hope that you will consider voting yes on this bill as a way to help workers and to help Colorado transition into the future. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, the question before us is the adoption of House Bill 1074 on third reading final passage. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Please close the machine. With 41 aye, 18 no, and six excused, House Bill 1074 is adopted. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title to House Bill 1068. House Bill 1068 by Representative Valdez, also Senator Winter F., concerning pet animal ownership and housing and in connection therewith, prohibiting restrictions on dog breeds for obtaining homeowner's insurance, pro providing for the manner in which pet animals are handled when a writ of restitution is executed, limiting limiting security deposits and rent for pet animals and excluding pet animals from personal property liens. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move House Bill 1068 on third reading and final passage. Representative Valdez. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and uh, apologize everyone, I have to beg for your permission to run a small third reading amendment, purely technical in nature. I would ask that it be displayed. Members, the question before us is the request to run a technical amendment to House Bill 1068. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members pr proceed to vote. Please close the machine. With 40, 50 aye, 
nine no and six excuse, the motion to allow permission for a technical amendment to House Bill 1068 is adopted. Representative Valdez. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I move L19 asked for an I vote. Thank you very much, members. Uh, members, the amendment has been properly displayed. Representative Valdez, can you tell us what the amendment does? So the amendment, thank you, Madam Speaker, the amendment simply renumbers uh, section three and ensures that we have the correct Roman numerals in there, and I ask for an I vote. Excellent. Members, the question before us is the adoption of amendment L019 to House Bill 1068. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Please close the machine. With 51 I, 8, no, and 6 excused, Amendment L19 is adopted. Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move House Bill 1068 as amended on third reading and final passage. Members, the motion before us is the adoption of House Bill 1068 as amended on third reading final passage. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Please close the machine. With 34 I, 25 no, and six excused, House Bill 1068 as amended is adopted. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title to House Bill 1077. House Bill 1077 by Representatives Wilford and Garcia, also Senators Winter F. and Hawkes Lewis. <clears throat> Concerning a requirement to obtain a patient's informed consent before performing an intimate examination of the patient under specified circumstances and a connection therewith making an appropriation. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move House Bill 1077 on third reading and final passage. The motion before us is the adoption of House Bill 1077 on third reading final passage. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Please close the machine. With 60 ayes, zero no, and five excused, House Bill 1077 is adopted. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title to House Bill 1130. House Bill 1130 by Representative Michael Sinjane, also Senator Rodriguez, concerning requirements for prescription drug coverage for serious mental illness and a connection therewith making an appropriation. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move House Bill 1130 on third reading and final passage. The motion before us is the adoption of House Bill 1130 on third reading final passage. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote.
please close the machine. With 57 aye, three no, and five excused, House Bill 1130 is adopted. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title to House Bill 1132. House Bill 1132 by Representative Snyder, also Senator Fields, concerning the court data sharing task force and a connection therewith making an appropriation. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move House Bill 1132 on third reading and final passage. The motion before us is the adoption of House Bill 1132 on third reading final passage. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Please close the machine. With 53 ayes, 7 no, and 5 excused, House Bill 1132 is adopted. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title to House Bill 1094. House Bill 1094 by Representatives Lukens and Catlin, also Senators Roberts and Peltonar, concerning modifications to the Agricultural Workforce Development Program. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move House Bill 1094 on third reading and final passage. The motion before us is the adoption of House Bill 1094 and third reading final passage. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Please close the machine. With 56 I, 4 no, and 5 excused, House Bill 1094 is adopted. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title to House Bill 1061. House Bill 1061 by Representatives Doherty and Taggart, also Senator Zenzinger, concerning permitting a retail establishment to serve complimentary alcohol beverages at a place of business and a connection there with making an appropriation. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move House Bill 1061 on third reading and final passage. The motion before us is the adoption of House Bill 1061 on third reading final passage. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Please close the machine. With 59 I, 1 no, and 5 excused, House Bill 1061 is adopted. Co-sponsors.
please close the machine. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title to House Bill 1168. House Bill 1168 by Representatives Sharbini and Joseph, also Senator Winter F., concerning legal representation and due process complaint hearings for the parents of a student who may be eligible for special education services and in connection therewith making an appropriation. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move House Bill 1168 on third reading and final passage. The motion before us is the adoption of House Bill 1168 on third reading final passage. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Please close the machine. With 52 aye, 8 no, and 5 excused, House Bill 1168 is adopted. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move to proceed out of order for consideration of Senate amendments to House bills. Seeing no objection, we will proceed out of order for consideration of Senate amendments to House bills. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move to lay over House Bill 1101 until tomorrow. Seeing no objection, House Bill 1101 will be laid over until tomorrow. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move to lay over House Bill 1004 until tomorrow. Seeing no objection, House Bill 1004 will be laid over until tomorrow. Mr. Schiebel, please read the title of House Bill 1139. House Bill 1139 by Representative Martinez, also Senator Simpson, concerning the modification of the salary categorization of locally elected officers in specified counties. Representative Martinez. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move that House Bill or that the House concur in Senate amendments to House Bill 1139. Please proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So, um, if you guys remember the original bill, um, all, all these counties, um, their commissioners had voted for an increase um, in their status, and so we just added two additional counties uh, that includes Montezuma and Route County. So, I urge and I vote. The motion before us is to concur with the Senate amendments on House Bill 1139. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote. Please close the machine. With 58 aye, 2 no, and 5 excused, the motion to concur with Senate amendments to House Bill 1139 is adopted. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move for the repassage of House Bill 1139 as amended. Members, you have heard the motion. Seeing no further discussion, the question before the House is the repassage of House Bill 1139 as amended. Mr. Schiebel, please open the machine and members proceed to vote.
please close the machine. With 53 aye, seven no, and five excused, House Bill 1139, as amended, is repassed. Co-sponsors. Please close the machine. Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move to lay over the balance of the calendar until tomorrow. The, seeing no objection, the balance of the calendar will be laid over until tomorrow. Madam Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that the House stand in recess until later today. Seeing no objection, the House will stand in recess until later today.